leads us on to what I think has been the most beautiful moment of this year scientifically. We have cracked the concept of the God particle. Can we start at the beginning? Yeah, big round of applause for the God particle. How good was it? But is it true that it's called the God particle, not because of some divine quality it has, but because they wanted to call it the goddamn particle? It was so, it was going to be so, forgive the language, goddamn hard to find, that they called it the goddamn particle and even used the title, that was a provisional title for the book, the goddamn uh, particle, but back then, 20 years ago, it was ever so shocking to have the word goddamn on the front cover of a book, so in a clever piece of marketing, they changed it to the God Particle. It has led to some degree of confusion. Again, the Sydney Morning Herald Journal of Record reported to someone who said some religious types had knocked on his door and said, do you know there is a God? They found him in their Hadron Kaleidoscope. <laughs> There's a few problems there. What is this Hadron Kaleidoscope, Dr. Carl? It is not a wooden tube with different lenses in it that you put in front of your eye. What they're actually talking about is the Hadron Collider. And this is my holiday photo from Christmas. And you can guess which country I'm in by not just the Hadron Collider itself, but by the clock on the wall. All of the clocks are Rolexes. We're on the border of uh, Switzerland and France, and so in this aerial shot, we're coming down, we're diving into the guts of Europe, going near the edge of Lake Geneva, and then here we see this 27 kilometer circumference ring, and underground there are four amazing experiments. So above ground, there are four buildings that each control these experiments underground, and it truly is a remarkable thing that they have done. What we're trying to do with the Large Hadron Collider, one of the major experiments was to understand the Higgs boson, yes? Yes, and wh what I'm gonna try and lay on you, Adam, has taken me five years to understand. Lay remember, it on me, Carl. Okay, you're made of atoms, remember them from school? And I'm made of atoms, got yep, that. Yeah, central core with electrons going around. Of themselves, the electrons have no mass and no size. I don't mean a very small size, I mean zero size and zero mass okay. of themselves. Okay. You there? Okay. Let's now go into the centre, the nucleus, and there are protons and neutrons. And these protons and neutrons are made of quarks. Of themselves, the quarks have no mass and no size. Now that, of course, is confusing. If I'm made up of things that have no mass and no size. And which are separated by a vacuum. But I have mass, I have size, where do I get that from? Those particles, the electrons, the quarks, when they interact with the ding, 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 Higgs field, that gives you mass. That was the big whoop, the big discovery in early July. We had finally proved to the happiness of the scientists that the thing that gives you this weird property we call mass is this Higgs field, which popped into existence about a tenth of a billionth of a second after the universe began. And this Higgs field is an inherent now, an inherent property of the fabric of space-time. And whenever any particle interacts with the Higgs field, a Higgs boson is exchanged. So that's why you'll hear the term Higgs field and Higgs boson. It was an incredible discovery and it really has made the last couple of months a great time to be a geek because all your non-geeky friends have been coming up going, can you, just, can you explain that to me? I saw these guys and girls getting excited. What's going on? But I'll be honest with you, Carl. I've explained it to a few people and I find when you start using the word quark, you get a reaction from people. They get a little bit confused. So I'll give you my two favourite quark-free explanations of how the Higgs field works. Imagine the universe contained everywhere at all points a giant invisible blob of honey. Honey. In the same way that a knife has trouble moving through honey, it picks up resistance as it attempts to move through the blob of honey. Particles pick up resistance as they move through the Higgs field and attach with Higgs bosons. Or imagine, here's one for you, yep. you'll get this. Okay, so I've got the first one. Yep. So the mass comes from interacting with this honey. Exactly. Imagine we're at a cocktail party. Now, yep. you like a cocktail party, don't you? Especially if they come in litre size and have a couple of umbrellas. Okay, so I'm at a cocktail party. 
I walk in the door of the cocktail party, I see the bar, I think, I'm going to get me one of those libations, and I walk over to the bar and I grab myself a drink. 30 seconds later, someone else walks into the cocktail party. It's the President of the United States, Barack Obama. No sooner does he step into the cocktail party, then people come from everywhere to talk to him. And it takes him forever to get to the other side of the room. The individuals in the cocktail party have attached themselves to the president like Higgs bosons attaching themselves to an electron. Hence, he has mass and it takes him a long time to move. Whereas I can walk into that room like a photon, friend free, and just sashay across the room at the speed of light to grab my drink. That's how your Higgs boson works, and it's thanks to this amazing piece of technology.